Okay, so let's get started. Um, my name is Rudy Potenzone from the Transmart Foundation. Uh, welcome to the Transmart training class for March of 2016. This session will be recorded and the, any slides that are used will be uh, posted uh, on the website, hopefully later today. Um, our training is, is offered, uh, we have a training class every month during uh, throughout 2016. It is on the last Monday of each month. And uh, this year we have a number of topics that we're covering besides just Transmart for Beginners, also covering loading data, which is today's topic, uh, exploring the Transmart advanced workflows and an ETL tutorial using the TM data loader. Uh, the training classes are conducted by Transmart members, Rancho Bioscience, Thomson Reuters, and The Hive. Uh, and today we're delighted to have The Hive uh, presenting the class on uh, loading data into the Transmart. You can see here the, the other topics uh, throughout the rest of the year. And uh, please, um, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll uh, enjoy today's class and want to sit in on some of the others. Please tell your colleagues uh, about these classes and invite them to, to join as well uh, in the future. Uh, this is a, um, a go-to meeting, go-to webinar from Citrix. Uh, logistically, uh, you are all uh, muted uh, and we will uh, conduct the class. Uh, I, I will remain on the line and monitor any questions. You can ask questions a couple of different ways. You can raise your hand uh, on your control panel, uh, your dashboard that you have. You can uh, type in a question into the question window, or you can send a message on the chat window. Uh, as I say, I will be monitoring these, and if we need to, uh, you know, we will uh, we will try to jump in and get your questions answered uh, as we go. But uh, in the event that um, you know we don't get to it, we will have time for questions at the end. Uh, and again, these will all be recorded and made available uh, later today. I'd like to start by asking a couple of quick questions. Um, just to give the, the trainers a, an idea of a little bit about your background. Um, the first question should be up there, uh, and it says, have you used the Transmart platform before? So it's good, uh, we, we'd like to, to find out, you know, get an idea of kind of what your background is and, and how much you know about the platform. Um, generally speaking, for the beginners classes, it's been about 75% have been brand new to the Transmart platform. Uh, today, uh, I'm not surprised. It's kind of opposite that. About 82% have used the platform in the past. So uh, thank you for your answers. <clears throat> uh, I would expect that you know you may have uh, you know you're using the platform, and the interest today is to uh, learn a little bit more about loading data. Uh, my second question is just to give us again a little bit of an idea of how you're using the platform, and so. Uh, in your organization, you know, are you, are you just using it as part of your research? Uh, are you supporting others? Uh, are you part, is this part of an academic research program? Uh, or are you working at a vendor? Uh, again, uh, these have largely been pretty equal uh, the, the, uh, across all these. Uh, today, um, we seem to have, uh, most of you are supporting others. Um, and about uh, a third of you are from vendors. So that's, uh, again, good to get that information for us. Okay, well, thank you for that. Okay, so we're ready to get started now. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Janneke, who will start the class for us. Uh, Janneke, I'm going to make you presenter. All right. Can everybody hear me? Or Sounds good. At least Rudy. Okay. Yep. Um, so thank you, Rudy, uh, for this introduction. Um, also, I'd like to start with thanking the Transmart Foundation for uh, organizing this series of webinars um, and for making this possible to the community. Uh, so thanks for that. Um, yeah, so next to me is my colleague uh, Vibo. We're both working at the Hive. Um, we have quite some experience with the Transmart ETL. Um, and we are delighted to, um, to talk about, 
yeah, to talk about Transmart ETL uh, and, and give an overview of the different tools that are available. Um, this is basically a follow-up of uh, the hands-on training that we did last year in the annual meeting of Transmart, um, which was quite an um, interesting session, uh, a lot of interaction with um, maybe some of you, uh, but maybe some of you are also new. Um, so in the announcement, it was described they would demonstrate uh, data loading with the cell line use case. Um, as this was done in detail in the hands-on training uh, and needs a bit more time and, and kind of interaction, uh, we mainly focus today on giving an overview of the ETL tools, uh, demonstrate some of the data loading options, um, but we'll provide the cell line use case uh, tutorial as a, um, a homework or a reference uh, page. Um, so, as I said, uh, we want to start with an overview of all the ETL tools available um, and frameworks or uh, add-ons um, for using these tools. Um, these include the Kettle ETL pipeline, uh, Thomson Reuters TM data loader and Transmart Batch, which was developed by us, by the Hive. Um, secondly, we'll give an overview of the different input files that all of these ETL tools expect. Um, I will look at, uh, at mainly the clinical and micro rare expression data. Um, as the file and folder structure is also important for the loading process, we'll spend some, some time on this. Um, thirdly, uh, we'll look at the shell scripts. It's a framework that was developed in the Dutch CTMAN trade project and it's used on top of the Kettle ETL jobs. And this framework uh, helps you for loading entire studies at once. And then we'll finish with a demo in which we'll walk through the input files again, uh, but in a more interactive mode, or at least sh show you how, how, it's, how it's been done live, and uh, load data using Kettle ETL at first. Uh, but we'll also show you how to, for example, load metadata using the Transmart Batch uh, ETL tool. So what do we mean when we talk about ETL for Transmart? So on the left, you see a spreadsheet with uh, subject level data. And on the right, you see a screenshot of the Transmart user interface. Um, as most of you are probably familiar with Transmart, um, this is, um, well, it's, it's a tree representative of, of um, or tree representation of all the data. Um, and our main goal of today is to explain how the different tools um, can be used for loading this type of data on the left into the Transmart database. Um, and data files are uh, tab delimited as a starting point. Um, those who've, who've worked with the Transmart ETL for quite some time might find this image uh, familiar. Uh, it can be scary uh, or messy sometimes, um, but don't worry, um, we'll, we'll help you and, and guide you in this. Um, as you can see here, it can be, can be quite, uh, quite a complex um, uh, structure. ETL is built up of uh, a lot of different steps, all doing their own part. And this is a screenshot of some of the uh, um, clinical data loading that's um, that's possible for Transmart. And in this, uh, this image, you see a screenshot of uh, the spoon, which is a graphical user interface um, on top of Kettle, uh, both developed by Pentaho. Um, and the ETL process can become very complicated uh, because you're not only just loading the data into a database, uh, but you would also need to keep in, in mind how to represent the data um, as you've seen in the tree structure before. Um, and you need to provide uh, the ETL to some kind of metadata model to represent this. Um, and while you are doing this, you should also keep track of the expected input formats and the processes that happen. Uh, so just to highlight uh, all the different aspects of, uh, of what the ETL entails. 
Yeah, so some examples of what is hap happening when you uh, model the data for Transmart. Um, for example, when you load omics data, uh, there is a, um, uh, a step where uh, expression values get calculated uh, into log intensities and z-scores. Um, there's checks if the data follow entity attribute value model, um, if the data gets loaded in a proper order, and um, you could also potentially use different input files um, in one loading job, and these files needs to, needs to be merged. Um, also, the tool, the ETL tool of choice um, uh, is important as it determines the way you need to provide your input format, uh, how the folders need to be organized, uh, whether or not you need to provide parameter files, uh, for example, around security of the study. Um, and also the, the ETL tool that you choose also um, is important for the path to the final tables, which we'll, we will show you in a second. Um, yeah, so in short, um, already introduced in the agenda, but there's three different ETL tools um, that we're going to highlight, which is Kettle ETL on the left, Transmart Batch in the middle, and then TM Data Loader. Um, so Kettle ETL is, uh, was originally developed uh, for Transmart and uh, the three uh, images on top of, of, on top of the Kettle ETL icon basically represent um, ways to launch the Kettle ETL scripts. So Transmart ICE is a GUI layer built by Sanofi. Um, allows you to create the, um, the color mapping, word mapping uh, with the graphical user interface and also allows you to launch the Kettle ETL scripts. Um, secondly, the shell script framework, which is built by the, for the Dutch CTMM trade project, uh, we'll show you a bit later on um, how, how that works. Uh, then there's the make commands. It's a certain way of uh, using command line um, for launching either Kettle ETL or Transmart Batch. Transmart Batch is also compatible with the make commands. Um, so it's not really ETL to itself. These three are just a way of, of launching uh, either Kettle ETL or Transmart Batch. Um, second thing I want to highlight here is uh, Transmart Arborist. It's a recent development uh, that we are doing at the Hive, mainly for the, also for the CTM and Trade project um, it's also a graphical user interface, which allows you to create a tree um, and easily support you in, uh, in creating all the, all the needed parameter files for loading with Transmart Batch. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, please go to GitHub. Uh, there is more information there. Um, I will now go into a bit more detail about the uh, three different tools uh, that you show on this that you see in this slide, and basically a path to the final database. So, um, first of all, on the left you see uh, as an input data files, um, which are tab delimited files like Excel spreadsheets, and then the mapping files refers to a corresponding file that all the ETL tools expect. And we'll explain those in more detail, but an example is a color mapping file or a word mapping file. Um, so in here you see the path from going, um, going from the data files to the final schemas. So there's a, uh, there's a whole bunch of transformation uh, that's um, that's in the cattle jobs. Um, and then SQL queries um, for moving the data into the temporary schemas, uh, which is TMCZ, TM, uh, TMWZ, and TMLZ. Those are the temporary uh, database schemas. And then store procedures are used for um, getting the data into the final transmart schemas. Um, there is a blue box around uh, this whole set, and it's um, to highlight 
that all the preparation of the database and getting all the required dependencies for running the cattle ETL, um, you can do that by checking out the Transmart data repository. So um, some of uh, some of you who have worked with the different repositories of Transmart uh, are probably familiar with Transmart data. Um, it's one of the uh, one of the repositories that you need. Um, both Postgres and Oracle databases are supported. Um, then secondly, TM Data Loader is built by Thomson Reuters. Um, it's, it's built in uh, Groovy um, and in some fashion it has a similar process as the cattle ETL files. With SQL uh, it um, loads the data into the temporary schemas. Um, the difference with the original uh, Transmart database schema is that it uses an additional um, schema. Um, and it also uses the store procedures for moving the data into the final schemas. Also here, both Postgres and Oracle are supported. Um, then when you compare it to Transmart Batch, uh, which is the last tool here, uh, it's also Groovy, Groovy Spring Batch based. Um, and the main difference with the previous two approaches is that it doesn't use the temporary schemas of the database. Um, and also thereby by bypasses the, all the store procedures that are, um, that are needed for the other two ETL tools. Um, one change to the, to the database schema is that it needs an additional uh, TS patch. It's mainly for all the job related uh, um, information. Um, last year in October, I said that uh, mainly Postgres was supported. I can now say that um, uh, both Postgres and Oracle are supported. Uh, and it also means that um, whenever we do a new development, um, we make sure that, uh, that it's both, uh, it, it serves both databases. Um, this is a table to show you um, for the different data types that Transmart can, can handle um, and, and that you can store um, which pipelines are available for each of the three tools. So each line represents either a data type or a specific um, uh, feature in Transmart. For example, the second line uh, indicates cross-trial mapping. It's not really a type of data, but it's more that it supports um, working with cross-trial data uh, as soon as, as you've uh, loaded it in a, in a proper way. Uh, but all the other lines represent uh, so-called data types. Um, well, there's some differences here that you can see, for example, Transmart ETL um, using Kettle doesn't support the upload of metadata or cross trial, whereas the TM data loader does support metadata and Transmart Batch supports both. Um, other than that, uh, the asterisks uh, indicate recent development. And um, well, as some of you might know, Transmart Batch is quite a recent uh, um, um, started development as in I think beginning of last year, but we're trying to keep up with all the data types that are available. Uh, just to highlight uh, how to um, how to get get started. Um, so all of this is available on GitHub. Um, for Kettle ETL, make sure that you check out the Transmart data repositories to get all the required dependencies. Uh, and important steps are uh, configuring your FARS file and make sure that your environment is uh, prepared. Um, but detailed information can be found in the, in the GitHub uh, README. Um, and also Transmart Batch can be found <coughs> in the uh, corresponding repository. Uh, also a detailed uh, tutorial for Get It Up and Running is, uh, is available there. Uh, so please, if you don't have any experience yet, um, yeah, find out on GitHub and uh, let us know in any in case of any questions. Um, so, just to highlight one 
I think I mentioned some of this already, but recent updates that we did in Transmart Batch is uh, uh, the support for Oracle, uh, make sure that we do uh, automated testing for both databases as well. Um, and development of additional pipelines. And so RNA sequencing data, copy number variation, and GWAS is now also supported. Um, ongoing work in Transmart Batch is um, the ability to upload multiple data sets per data type. So some of you are familiar with, um, with loading data. Um, I know this is also, I think, partially supported in the TM data loader, but with Cattle ETL, uh, you needed to make sure that um, once you have a, a second set of gene expression data, you need to change the folder content. Um, but we'll make sure that for Transmart Batch, you can, uh, you can upload uh, multiple data sets per data type without changing, uh, changing folder content, folder names, etc. Um, and we're working on mRNA data upload and RBM data. Okay, I'll take over here and I'll start with an, uh, an, an overview of the input files. But before I do, uh, I would like to mention uh, at the end of the presentation, we will share the slides so you don't have to write down the links and the references as we go along. So <coughs> uh, these data files, uh, only refer to the cattle and transform batch and not for uh, TM data loader. And for each data type uh, that we handle today, which is uh, one, one clinical data set and one expression set, uh, you need data file and mapping files, and in this case also the, the parameter file, specifying some uh, environment variables the ETL tool needs. Uh, to start off, uh, we start off with clinical. Um, the data file is uh, a plain separated text. Um, you have to include uh, a, a header in the text because the ETL2 expects the first line to be the header. And one of the columns in the, in the data file should be, uh, refer to subject IDs. And then each other additional column should contain one measurement. Uh, important here is that you have unique subject IDs per row. And that's the the input expects uh, one entity uh, per attribute per value. Uh, next to the clinical data file, you have to have a mapping file. And the mapping file basically tells the ETL tool uh, what each column in the, in the input clinical data file means. Uh, it has six columns, and for now we'll focus on the first four, as the, the last two are not actively used for basic loading. Uh, the first column is the file name. So here you can specify the, the name of the clinical data file. The second column is the category CD, and this is part of, um, of the path that you can see in the Transmart tree. The third column is the column number in the, in the clinical data file that this particular line uh, represents. And the fourth column is the data label, which uh, is inserted in the, in the database as the actual label that you see in the Transmart tree. Uh, the category CD and the data label together um, determine uh, how the data ends up in the, in, the, in the database and how you see it in the tree eventually. Uh, so here you can see an overview of, of how this works. So for example, the, in the column mapping file, you see that uh, the first line indicates uh, subject ID, uh, which corresponds to the, to the first column, and then the second column highlighted with the red bar here. You see, um, in this case, it's age, and you see that the category CD together with the data label, if you look at the top right, you see that it gets inserted uh, beneath the, the study name in the cell line characteristics, cell lines, and then age, as is specified in the path. Uh, one important difference here uh, between uh, categorical and numerical. Um, numerical values like age or height uh, get inserted uh, as the data label. But if you have a categorical options, like for example, sex, as you can see here, uh, is a folder gender in the top right, then you see um, it turns into a folder. And this folder contains all the categorical options that you have uh, listed in your clinical data file. 
uh, additionally, in, in this particular case, you see that uh, gender uh, is encoded with zeros and ones, and you can use the word mapping file to uh, remap these values uh, so that you get see the nice um, categorical option instead of uh, ones and zeros, and the data actually means something for the, the human eye. Uh, next to the the mapping files and the, and the data file, you need to have the parameter file, and in this case, it's the clinical.parents, and it specifies uh, what the color mapping file is and which word mapping file to use. And in this case, you can also uh, add the option to security required, and if you fill in yes, then it's loaded as a private study, uh, and if it's no, then it's loaded as a public study. Uh, parameter file, you, uh, you will need the parameter file also for the expression data, and then it's called expression of parents. It's uh, specific to the data that you're trying to load. So moving on to the expression data. The expression data, and in this case it's uh, mRNA microarray expression, is uh, one of the types of high dimensional data that can be uploaded to Transmart, uh, and this uh, file has uh, straightforward, the first column contains prop IDs, uh, which are on the microarray, and then each subsequent column has data with measurements for the for each sample. And the header name sample 1 and sample 2 should be sample uh, specific as it used in the subject sample mapping file. The subject sample mapping file in the in this case uh, combines the sample data to the subjects that were in the, in the, in the clinical data, and it defines where in the, in the transmart tree you can find your data. It also adds additional information, like uh, the platform annotation, and the platform annotation is something that you load with uh, high dimensional data telling you, for example, probe one is gene TP53, or corresponds to gene, uh, gene TP53. Um, I won't go into detail for, uh, into the annotation because it's uh, out of the scope of this webinar, but for more information uh, you can have a look at the SANA use case and how to load that. Uh, this is the actual mapping file. It has 10 columns and uh, the important columns here are the study ID, the subject ID, the sample ID, the platform and the category CD. Um, site ID, uh, tissue type, attribute 1, attribute 2, and source ID can be empty. Uh, the subject ID corresponds to the, the subjects loaded in the clinical data, and the sample ID corresponds to the header in the expression data file. The platform um, indicated here is the, the name of the platform annotation that, that ha has to be loaded before you load uh, the expression data. But again, please look at the use case if you want to know more about this. Uh, the, the columns tissue type, attribute 1, attribute 2 can be used in the category CD as, uh, as well as platform. As you see here, it's indicated with capitals platform. Uh, during the, the loading, then the, the value in that particular field gets inserted. So you can uh, adjust the category CD while you load. But that, uh, I'll try to make it more clear while, when we load the data. Uh, before we load the data, as we know now, now know the, the structure of all of the files. Um, you also need to have the files in a particular uh, location. And if you use the, the make commands with cattle, it expects the data to be in the transfer data, samples, studies, and then in a folder with the study ID. And then in this study ID folder, you have uh, you can give it a, this any name. The study ID is the, the name that's get, that gets inserted into the into, into the database. You have to have uh, predefined names for the, the data type, so you have clinical and expression in this case. Uh, to zoom in on the clinical, it looks like this. Uh, you have in the study ID you have the clinical folder, and the clinical .params is next to the clinical folder. And then in the clinical folder, so one level lower, you have your mapping files with your data file. <clears throat> um, when, when this is all ready, for the cattle ETL, ETL you can just uh, call the, the loading process by typing make with the dash C and then 
samples indicating which database you would like to load to, so Postgres or, or, or Oracle, and then load underscore clinical with your study name or study ID that you inserted. It's, uh, it refers to the, the folder name in which all the clinical and expression data are saved. And the same for the expression. Uh, Transmart Foundation has a nice uh, wiki with all already curated data sets you can use, uh, load to your Transmart instance with these make commands. And the, the reference uh, is here and uh, below in the slide. And uh, the little black box shows uh, the different make commands that you can available to load the data. Um, because the folder structure is set, uh, you can only load one, for example, one um, expression data set at a time. So if you want to load multiple, um, for example, visit data on week zero, week 12 expression uh, sets, then you need to uh, move around files uh, to uh, circumvent this. We, in the CTMM project, we have the shell script upload framework. And I'll uh, quickly, well, quickly, I'll give a short overview of, the, um, of what this entails. Um, it's built on top of Kettle, and currently it only works for Postgres. Um, it's a framework consisted of building blocks, and each building block can be used to um, indicate a part of the study that needs to be loaded. Uh, the structure of the, of the folders still uh, is the same, uh, but you can rename, for example, clinical to something else because uh, it's not bound to this anymore. Um, to go into the building blocks, so in this case, we have, uh, I indicated there's two different loaded shell scripts, but you can give them any name that you want. But it starts, uh, and this is taken from the Sana use case, on the, on the left, the, at line one, first the environment gets, uh, gets set uh, at line four, and then it moves on to line six, where it says, okay, go into, in this case, a folder called clinical, and there execute the next building block, which in this case is also called load.shell. Then if we follow the green arrow to the, the right box, you see that uh, here the, the command is executed to load clinical data. And when this building block is done, it goes back with uh, the lower green arrow back to line seven on the box on the left. And here it goes down into the expression, uh, into a folder called expression, executing the next building block and so on. So you can um, build a framework within your um, well, study folder indicating which data set should be loaded. Uh, for a full uh, example of this, please, Again, have again, uh, again a look at the, the selling use case. Uh, okay, and then the last part is the demo. Uh, for the demo, we'll have a look at clinical data. Uh, we'll load the clinical data. We'll show us a subset of mRNA expression data. Uh, we'll load these data using commands. And then we'll uh, extend the data with metadata tags using transform batch. Um, we're using the transform batch. In this case, um, the command to load the metadata tags is almost the same as loading the clinical data. So when I show this, you should be also be able to load clinical data using transform batch. Uh, So, clinical data. So here we have a clinical file shown in Excel. Um, in this particular uh, case, you see that the, the study ID is in the in the second column, as we can see in the in the column mapping file um, after this. Yeah, uh, I've added in this case I have added to two. Um, variables to, to demonstrate in the column method file where the basically the category city so we can uh, fill this in where we want. So the, um, the next is the column mapping file. So this is the column mapping file corresponding to this uh, to this data uh, clinical data file and here you can see that the subject ID is indeed in column 2 for this particular uh, data file. Uh, all of the other um, 
columns are will be loaded into to the demographics and then with uh, these data labels. And here you can see that I haven't filled this in yet. I'll fill it in uh, at right before loading. Uh, and it will be loaded as a random variable and as the block card. Also, uh, because block plot only has one and two, and we want to have uh, remap this to positive and negative, you see here the file name again, then the column, which should be renamed from this file, and then um, value one should be renamed to positive, and value two should be renamed to negative. Uh, lastly, we'll have a look at uh, the parameters file. Uh, here you see that the column mapping file is called GSC 19429 columns and the word mapping file is uh, wordmap.txt. Um, in this case, there's no uh, security required, so by default it, it uh, assumes it's a public study. Um, before moving on, we'll first load this. Um, so I've set up a virtual machine where you can see uh, everything's uh, installed here. So we go to transfer data. Uh, wait, first we go to studies. In studies, you can see here the, the particular study that I prepared for this, this is the web GSE study. Um, remember, we have to fill in the, the column mapping file. And we're using this. Uh, doing this using the command line in this case because it's already on uh, on the VM and if I use Excel then I have to move it. Uh, so for now I'll just insert it into a webinar and then we save it. Okay, so now we can go back home and go into the transmit data repository. Now first we source the first file, which sets the environment. Uh, yeah, a few the first file. So in the first file you set um, the the host for the, PG, the Postgres database. In this case, it's a Postgres instance. <coughs> the port on which the Postgres instance can be uh, reached, the name of the database, and the user who is loading the data with some additional uh, settings for cattle where, where it can find its, uh, for example, kitchen, which it needs to execute all the files correctly. And now you can type make, see, samples, uh, it's a Postgres instance, and then we load the clinical data. Clinical and web. And now you see it, it prompts, uh, it tells you the study ID and the data location where it's uh, looking for the data and it's busy processing the file. This is the, the log that you see uh, of Kitchen, it's uh, doing data transformation basically up until you see the next block which this block right here, oh. this block right here. Uh, indicates that it's gone into the stored procedure, so it's been loaded into the temporary schemas and the stored procedure is taking over. And then at the end you see all done, uh, no errors. So the data has, has, has been loaded. And we can see this here. In the transport instance. Uh, as a public data set now we have to uh, the web study. And here you see the webinar that we just added with the plot clots. Uh, word mapping actually uh, is successful. Um, next up we go to the expression. So here you see a, a really small subset of uh, expression data. Within the in the first column you have the, the probes and it's uh, and in each of the columns, there's a, a sample name with the measurement for that probe. And then the subject sample mapping file, where, where you can see the, the 10 columns. And here you see the study ID. Site ID is empty. Uh, again, the subject ID, which has been 
linked to a sample uh, sample ID in the in the in the data file. The platform that's being used is GPL 570, and that's uh, the platform was already loaded into the database. And in this case, the tissue type is uh, bone marrow, and the category CD will be biomarker data plus platform plus tissue type. So we expect it to be in biomarker data, and then GPL 570 bone marrow. Uh, the the make command hardly changes. Now you just change the clinical to expression, and you look, again it prompts you that uh, it's starting kitchen. And it's doing uh, it almost looks the same as the clinical data, but it's taking a few different steps. And here you see that it's inserting into the database. And it says finished, all done. So if we have another look, so we refresh this. Now you see that uh, there's a biomarker data node as well. And the biomarker data, GPL 570 bone marrow, and this is what we uh, would expect it from the from the category CD that we saw in the Excel file right here. Um, as a last step, I'll show you the how to add expression data, or uh, metadata, sorry. Uh, so if you right click here and show definition, now it's, uh, it shows no information found, and we would like to know something uh, more about the study. Uh, and this can be done uh, well, in this case, we use transport batch, and I also show you uh, one of the advantages is that you can call transport batch from anywhere. So we'll go back home, and here you see that I have a transport batch folder. Uh, in the transport batch folder, I have here the batch db properties, which uh, which contains again the the information it needs to connect to the database. And now you can tell it to uh, use transform patch and then add transform patch. Uh, patch the data properties. So with the C flag, you indicate where the, the settings are to connect to the database. And then with the P flag, you indicate where the data is. In this case, it's in studies. Uh, and because we want to load uh, the tag data, we use the tag.params. But if, for example, we wanted to load uh, clinical data, we could have used clinical.params or expression data with expression.params. And if you now execute the command, it takes uh, some time to start running. And now it, uh, it shows you, again, it, uh, it lists on screen what it's actually doing. Um, interesting step is here, for example, you see warnings. And these indicate uh, three items which I have made an error in, in curation, where, which have not, not been inserted. So it, it looks for public studies and then the study, uh, study ID and a folder called mRNA. And if you look in the, uh, the actual database in the study name, you indeed see no mRNA. So it, because it couldn't find the folder, it, it gives an error. But it did uh, correctly insert all of the paths it could find. So if you now look at show definition, you see a nice report from for this particular study with uh, a title, uh, organisms used, and uh, citation rules, because there's a paper available for this one. Um, just to show you how this looks like, because uh, you have to add this yourself. Studies. In a, a, it's, I've called it text, dot, uh, text, dot text, but you can call it whatever you want. Um, okay. Text. Uh, here you can also see the structure. So here you see the study name with all the different folders and the parameters. And in this case, uh, the tags have been uploaded 
after the clinical data. So there's a separate text file with a separate text.params folder. And here you see the folder, which will open in Excel. Let's make it more clear. Yeah. So the, it is a, a file indicating um, a concept key, which indicates what path uh, the, the data should be added to. And here you see the mRNA, which indeed it couldn't find. Uh, so the, those are the, the lines that give an error. Then you indicate the tag title and the tag description. And it even has a, a rank option, an index, which indicates uh, the priority of these lines. Okay. Uh, where is my present? Um, okay, uh, with this we've come to the end of the demo. Uh, here's a, a slide with references, which again you can uh, you receive the slides after the presentation. And a recap. So we had a, a look at a, an overview of the ETL tools and um, well, one of the frameworks uh, designed. Uh, well, two frameworks actually, the make commands and the shell scripts. Um, we had an overview of the input files. Uh, we, we had a look at the shell script upload framework from the developed in the CTM and trade project. And we had, uh, again, uh, a look at the input files and actual data loading process in the demo. If you have any further questions after this webinar, uh, you can always contact us and any questions? Okay, thank you. Um, so if you have a question, you can raise your hand um, with, on the dashboard, or you can type your question in, or you can type a question into the chat window. Um, if you do, I can open up your mic and I'll let you ask, ask the question directly. Okay, I see one question. Let's see. To find it. Daniel? Um, I just sent you an audio pin. If you could type that in, we can turn on your mic, your question, or else if you would type the question, we can answer it. Okay, Daniel, you should be able to talk now. Okay, great, can you hear me? Yes, sounds fine, yep. Uh, I have a question about placing data in long format. It, it looked like you mentioned you need a unique subject ID and then you can add the other pieces that each row is unique, is that is that correct? Or I, it just seems like uh, every, everything needs to be unique, but put, placing a lot of our data is in long format. So. I'm just curious how that, how that uh, with the look. You mean the clinical data? Yes. 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 Uh, so currently, transplant batch only supports um, uh, one wide format, so one one unique um, subject ID per row. So you will have to either split the data out into different uh, different data files, or you will have to pivot the data based on these long format columns. Uh, that's how we currently load the data. Yeah, and in addition to that, I think in the um, color mapping file, uh, we we didn't include um, an explanation about the last last two columns of the color mapping file. Maybe we can show that slide. Um, but more um, extended functionality here. Um, we didn't uh, show you in detail, uh, but I know that uh, in the community there is. Um, there's people who use, use that column uh, for long format input data. Um, but it's currently not, not something we use here. So as Weibo indeed suggested, uh, uh, you could either pivot the data or, 
use separate input files. Um, so, okay. what Janneke means, um, what you can do, you can specify, for example, um, I'll just type it here, you can specify uh, column five is, for example, data for the, from the long format. And then instead of entering a data label, um, I'm just, I'll just do it like this, slash, and then you say data label. And what you can do then, for example, with the diagnosis, uh, no, sorry, my bad, I guess. Data label, leave the one empty. And instead of typing diagnosis, you type slash and then uh, five. So what it does now, now it takes uh, from column five, it takes the value that's in column five in your data file and it inserts it as a data label for the data found in column four. Uh, yeah, and it's a bit of an expert use of the column mapping file. That's why we didn't include it in this webinar. Uh, but just to show you that there is a way to work with long format. Right? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, we had a question from Irina about um, geo data sets and uh, are, what pre-processing steps are needed to uh, load geo data. Do you know about that or I? <clears throat> um, yeah, I can say something about that. So um, I think there is um, there's quite some things you could do to prepare the geo data. Uh, for example, the um, um, making sure that all the variables that you want to uh, want to load from the clinical set um, make sure that they are represented in the way you want. So there's some curation or at least uh, changing of variable names needed. Um, I think you can start from a downloaded soft table from Geo and extract all the uh, all the information that you need from that from that file. Um, and also the gene expression data. Um, I know that uh, on the um, the Transmart Foundation, so the curated data sets, a lot of the Geo data uh, platforms have already been been added so you can uh, use those so yeah. you don't have to curate anything for that and then it's uh, I think you can what you said just take the soft tables and, and you have to build a column mapping file yeah and then then you can already load the data yeah so it's, it's basically reformatting that that file um, you always need to first upload the clinical data to make sure the patients are created in the transmart and then as a second step upload the gene expression data um, so you need to split that i think that is all included in the soft table so you need to split that out in separate files that's basically in short the steps that you need to do Okay, and um, yeah, I've also, I'm gonna put a link in the um, the question so that you can see that on the wiki, there's uh, information about what geo data sets are, have already been pre-processed. And that should appear also in the, uh, we'll put that into the notes. Okay. We have, another, we have another question from Matthias. Does Transmart support the I2B2 concept of modifiers? No, no, the, no, not as far as I know. No. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if that it does either. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Um, if not, again, let's. Uh, I'd like to thank Guibo and Yannicka. Very uh, excellent presentation. Uh, we will post the slides and also the uh, recording of this on the website, uh, hopefully later today. And um, thank you all for uh, uh, listening in. And um, hopefully you'll uh, refer your friends and colleagues to, uh, to other training classes that we have planned in the future. Thanks, everyone. And with that, we'll uh, close the session. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy.